Thank you, Mr. Chair, um, and thanks to all of you for being here with us today. Um, you, Mr. Wynn, you talked about a code of conduct, and Mr. Calbrace, you also talked about um, the code of conduct and, um, and also kind of the know before you fly program. Could you describe in a little more detail what's in the code of conduct and also know before you fly what, what's, what's made up as part of that program? I'd be happy to provide our code of conduct for the record, ma'am. And uh, but, but by by and large, we you know we've we, we've covered that a little bit uh, in my earlier. I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's really about common sense. Uh, there's, you know, the, I think by and large, as I indicated, this is an industry that recognizes that if it doesn't fly safely and responsibly, it will not be sustainable. Uh, we will have all kinds of challenges, not only at the federal level, but at every state level and potentially at the municipal level. Um, we do have a code of conduct. Um, you know, it, it, the word potential is being used a lot on this panel, potential for this, the potential for that. Uh, I would urge us not to try and solve, you know, create solutions for problems that don't yet exist but I would commit to you that this, I represent a community that will fly safely and responsibly, and as our code of conduct needs to be strengthened, it will be strengthened. Uh, one of the reasons why we need regulations from the FAA is because we need more trained operators out there, as with aviation, it is a self-policing community. Uh, we do not tolerate careless and reckless behavior. If I see someone doing something careless and reckless with an aircraft, I report them. I talk to them and I report them. Know Before You Fly is a campaign that was largely stood up uh, in conjunction with the Academy of Model Aeronautics and the FAA uh, to train non-aviators, which are the people that, you know, anyone can now walk into an, iP an, an Apple store and, and buy a drone and go fly. But, but that doesn't mean that they're in a place where they should. Uh, so the whole idea is to try and train people about where it's appropriate to fly uh, and where it's not appropriate to fly. And, and there are an, an increasing number of tools that are available um, to, uh, to the general public and to non-aviators, things that I just have on my iP iPad already, which would allow me to look at and see how far am I from an airport, for example, um, and so forth. There's also technology that, are com that is coming into uh, these different devices that will help for you know, to, to make certain that the device won't fly. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. So you could use technology to limit um, using GPS and other things to limit where a device is able to go. Um, are folks looking at implementing that type of technology so that even if you wanted to, you couldn't go, for example, into airspace that is, that is off limits? That's never a substitute for airmanship and education, uh, but, but those technologies increasingly are going to be leveraged going forward. They can also be disabled by people who wanted to do that. Mm -hmm. So it, again, it's important to have trained operators out there, and, and increasingly, uh, not only will our, will our community have its own code of conduct and its own safety best practices, but every single industry that's utilizing this technology uh, will be doing the same thing. Uh, Mr. Calabrese, can you comment? Yeah, I think it's important to say that we, we don't have codes of conduct that are really robust yet, and, and clearly we need them. And I, I think there's a great example is the, is the delivery aspect of drones, right? No one sees a lot of data collection need in the delivery of things. I mean, there may be some, but it's relatively limited. So why don't we find ways that we can constructively say, we may have drones all over the place in five years delivering my packages, but none of them are going to be collecting data, or if they are, we can have the flexibility to say it's immediately deleted. So, you know, we, we're not trying to be overly prescriptive. Tech, CDT believes in the power of technology to make things better, but we also believe that we have to be responsible about the data we collect. And so a lot of these industries, and, and we've already heard that, can do more to collect less, if you will. And so I think we all need to push for codes that do that. And Congress needs well, to step in if they don't. Well, we know that we're behind on some laws, even things like Electronic Communications Privacy Act. So we have a lot of, of work to do to make sure our laws are up to date with the way technology works. And this is another place where um, we want to make sure we support innovation but also make sure we protect privacy and safety. And um, that's why I think it's very, very important that we continue to, to work hard on all these efforts so that we have, um, we understand there are incredible uses like agriculture or wildfires, as you brought up um, in Washington State. Um, we, we have, they're important uses, but we also have to make sure we 
have consumer protections in place as well. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I yield back. I thank the gentlelady.